I'm Matthew Woods, host of Leading Out of the Woods, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you are listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 186 of the House of EdTech podcast, we're going to get creative with QR codes, we're going to take feedback to another level, and I think it's time to talk a little bit more about podcasting and audio and education. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech podcast. I am your host, Chris Nessie. The House of Ed Tech explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. I discuss technology that is changing our classrooms and schools, and I share tools and tips that you can hear today and use tomorrow. You're going to hear the stories of teachers, leaders, and creators just like you. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way you teach and how your students learn. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good generic time of the day. Welcome to another episode of the House of EdTech podcast. I could not be happier that you are here making this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. If you are new to the show, welcome. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. Got some really fun things in store for you today, and I'm very excited. But first, a quick announcement. Now, I know it's the end of September, beginning of October time period, but that means the end of the year is coming. What does that mean for you? Well, it's almost time for the 2021 House of EdTech Smackdown. This is going to be the eighth annual Smackdown, and it's one of my favorite regular episodes to create each and every year, and I've been doing it since 2014. So what is this episode, you might ask, if you are, again, a new listener? Well, I want you to share your favorite ed tech tool or tip from the last year. How do you use it? What do you think students think of the tool? What do you think of the tool? Give us all the details and help others who might find this tool or tip valuable. This year's Smackdown is going to be episode 193, and I'm going to be releasing it on December 26th, 2021. Now I need your submission by December 18th. 2021. I recommend you get it done ASAP so you don't forget. Now, I know a lot of listeners, maybe even you, you want to submit something, but then life gets in the way. So sit down, record that audio, and send it to me, or write that email. And as I like to say, if you send me text, well, you take your chances as to how I will do an impression of you when I read your email. And I mean that, of course, in a comedic way as you've come to know and love. So I want you to think about what you want to share. And if you want to see things that have been shared in the past, you can visit chrisnessy.com slash all time smackdown. And special thanks to super listener Derek Larson for compiling and maintaining this spreadsheet of all the things that have been recommended. And we are far enough into this journey, you and I, where we don't need to have any limits. So if there's something that's been recommended before, and you love it, and you've got your reasons, share your perspective, and we can certainly have repeated tools. So no worries about that. A second announcement here at the top of the episode, September 30th, depending on when you're listening to this, is International Podcast Day, which is the podcast holiday. Very exciting time. Now, maybe you create a podcast, maybe you don't, but here's what everybody can do on International Podcast Day. And that is share and spread the good word of podcasts. Maybe you can share your favorite podcast, tweet about it, put it on Instagram. Maybe consider emailing the host or hosts of some of your favorite podcasts. Leave a rating, write a review in iTunes or wherever you listen and can share some feedback. Show some podcasters some love. And if you've got time after that and you enjoy this podcast, You can certainly send a little love my way on September 30th, 
which is International Podcast Day. And now, the EdTech Thought. This episode's EdTech Thought kind of fits in with the whole theme of the episode, which we're going to get to the featured content, which is all about podcasting and audio and education. But I wanted to share something here in this segment that I'm actually having fun with. Now, I do have a lot of fun with audio and podcasting and editing, but I found another way to get creative in schools using QR codes and audio. So this is kind of like a pseudo recommendation, but I do have a recommendation coming up after this segment. But anyway, let's get into the thought here. And what I want to recommend to you is a different way to think about QR codes and what you can share because QR codes are very powerful. Now, if you're not familiar with what a QR code is, it's the codes you can scan with your phone, with the camera app, and you know your phone will then do something. A link will open, an app might open. Something is going to happen because you scanned the code. The website I want to recommend that you try with this, and it's freemium, but I've been using it for free and I haven't had any issues, is qr-code-generator.com. So QR Code Generator lets you generate free QR codes, but what you can link the QR codes to from this site, and I'm sure you could do this on other sites, but this is the one I've had some experience with, so I feel comfortable recommending it to you. It lets you attach a number of things and a number of actions that could happen when somebody scans your QR code. You can have a URL load. You could have a V card or you know a virtual contact card. Uh, you can make text pop up. You can start an email. You can have an, uh, a text happen. You could have somebody join a Wi-Fi network by scanning a QR code, which, small aside, create the QR code using this feature, stick it in your house, and if your internet goes down or somebody comes over and you want to give them access to your Wi-Fi network or a guest network instead of telling them a password, you could have them scan a QR code and it will connect them to your network. Pretty cool. Uh, you can link a QR code to Bitcoin, to Twitter, to Facebook. You can make a PDF file open. Uh, you could link to something in uh, specific app stores. You can have an image load. But the feature I want to talk about is you can scan a QR code and you can get audio to play, which I think is neat. So there's any number of applications. So just a couple that come to mind. First, I'll share what I'm using it for. In the high school that I work in, across just across the hall from me, there's uh, three display cases. Two are like uh, display cases that have some depth to them. And then there's one in the middle where it's just like a bulletin board with sliding glass frames that slide to either side so you can kind of tack stuff up on a bulletin board. So one day after school, I was bored, which means Chris gets into trouble. So I put some paper up to decorate the background of this bulletin board. And I was like, what can I do with a QR code that, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody about. I'm just kind of going to stick it up there and, you know, see what happens. So I recorded a short audio message. It might be 50 to 55 seconds long. I took the time to put some music under it. And I just recorded a simple welcome back to school message. You got this very uplifting, very nice. And I associated that audio file with one of these QR codes from qr-code-generator.com. And I was able to print a QR code that had the graphic under it that said scan here to listen. And when you scan it, your uh, the web browser on your phone will open up. So that could be Safari or Chrome, depending on your phone and what your defaults are set at. And this nice player loads. I was able to customize the artwork and it kind of looks like, like a podcast is going to play. And you click play and the audio is there and you get some analytics. So I know that as I'm recording this versus when I posted it, you know, I think 20 or 24, 24 people have scanned it. Now you might say that's not a lot, but that's 24 people who heard a message who they otherwise wouldn't have heard if they didn't take the time to randomly scan this QR code on a bulletin board in the hallway. And I'm going to change the audio every month. Now, here's the cool thing. The QR codes on this website that you create, they are dynamic, which means you don't need to reprint a new QR code. I can go in to my free account on this website, again, qr-code-generator.com, 
and I can swap out the MP3 file and not have to change the QR code. Now on my bulletin board, it says I I printed out the word September, so I'm going to have to print out the word October, but I don't have to print a new QR code and you can almost set it and forget it. So if I was going to put these QR codes in other places in the building, I wouldn't have to worry about going all around the building and replacing those QR codes. So I think that's a really cool feature. And another thing that I thought of was, you know, if we want to promote, like I talked about international podcast, you want to promote listening to audio, you might be the person who does like the potty PD or learning in the loo or whatever term you want to talk about when you're getting professional development on the toilet. Doesn't matter to me, but maybe you can include a QR code and some audio on your little flyer that you put up in the bathroom and people can maybe read an article or listen to some audio that you record. And it might be a fun way to include audio in what you're doing. So I just wanted to share something I I tried. And I guess there's any number of places in this episode I could put this, but I guess it comes down to your mindset and being willing to try new things. And sometimes, and I thought of this idea out of boredom after school, waiting, you know, to go to teach uh, at Rutgers where I have, you know, four and a half hours of free time between the end of my high school day and teaching. So I was listening to some music. I was, I'll be honest, I had my eyes closed and I was resting because the days are long now. And, uh, the idea just kind of came to me. So I just kind of ran with it and you might run, you might want to run with it too. See, words are hard sometimes, especially for us podcasters. So that is my ed tech thought using QR codes for audio sharing. For this episode's recommendation, I recently came across this really interesting tool that I think takes feedback to another level. We all know how important providing feedback to our students is. And here's another tool and, I guess, way to do that. And this is called Floop. F-L-O-O-P. Floop is a web app that saves you time and will help your students see the value in feedback. You can collect images, PDFs, Google Docs from your students, and you can leave text and audio comments that lead to conversations. Now, the initial word that kind of came to mind when I saw this was it's kind of like augmented reality in that you wind up taking a picture of something or somebody sends you a document and you're just kind of dropping these points on where you want to add feedback. So it can be, again, audio feedback. Um, and, and kids can listen to it. There's, there's ways you can get kids to be involved in giving feedback to other students. Um, but, but let me stay on track here. So, I mean, you're going to go check this out anyway. Uh, Floop is freemium. They have a basic free plan as well as a premium option. And they're also willing to work with entire districts who might be interested in a larger scale rollout. So they've got some unprinted pricing. If you're a district that's interested in this. Uh, And as far as I can tell, the only difference between the free plan and the uh, pay plan for an individual person is the number of active assignments you can have going, which is limited to 10 on the free account. Now, based on seeing this, I don't know that I would, I, I would have the need to have more than 10 assignments available on this. The website for this is floop.edu.com. And I'm actually going to right now drop a little audio in here. And this is a video from the floopedu.com website. So here's Floop. Feedback is the number one driver of student learning outcomes. As a high school teacher, I know this from research and experience. However, I have 150 students. Every day I was taking home a huge stack of papers. It was impossible for me to give my students the feedback they needed when they needed it. And when my students received feedback, they didn't know how to use it. They would take one look and toss it into the recycling. So we created Floop. Floop helps teachers give meaningful feedback four times faster. And even better, it teaches students to actively engage with their feedback. Here's how it works. When students are stuck or have completed their assignments, they can submit their work through Floop. I can see my students' work as soon as it's been submitted. I can add comments, questions, and next steps. 
When I see similar student mistakes, I can drag and drop previous comments. From there, the feedback is sent instantly to my students, and we can continue the conversations in Floop or in person. Students can revise and resubmit their work, helping them grow from feedback. Floop also helps me run a peer review on any assignment. The peer review is anonymous for students, so students won't know whose work they're seeing, and they won't know who gave them feedback. Students can view and give feedback on five work samples in just half a class period. The process is scaffolded to build their feedback literacy skills, and I get a summary of the peer review as it happens. Lastly, students can assess themselves, giving them agency over their own learning. Floop solves one of the biggest challenges for middle school and high school teachers, who often have 100 to 200 students. Now, every student can get the timely feedback they need from their teacher, their peers, and themselves. Floop was built by a strong team of current educators and refined in our own classrooms. Join the feedback movement today at floopedu.com. There you go. That's floopedu.com. Check it out. I'm playing with it, and I'm getting to that time of year where I'm going to be doing the first DBQ assessments of my high school students in social studies, and I see this as being a valuable tool. And from their website, it, it seems like this would work really well in math, maybe in science, and I guess obviously any subject. So go check out floopedu.com, and that's my EdTech recommendation. Right. So for this episode's featured content, and again, this episode is called Podcasting and Audio and Education 2021. So uh, podcasting is something that whether you're with me, you know, it, heck, even if this is your first episode, let me just tell you, I am passionate about podcasting and creating audio. And I just love doing this sitting here in the house of EdTech or doing podcast PD or the chase for 28 or knock, knock who's there with my son. I love podcasts. I love podcasting. I love editing podcasts. So I've really taken to this whole audio thing. I really don't know why, but I have. And in the past I have created content about how to podcast. And I will reference those in just a little bit. Uh, But first I recently got a question and I don't have it in front of me, which makes me a bad podcaster in some regards, but somebody recently asked me about podcast recommendations. And actually, you know what? I do have it up because I do know what I'm doing. So Barbara Kenny mentioned me on Twitter and reached out. She is at Barbara Kenny five on Twitter. I will link to her in the show notes out at chrisnessy.com slash 186. She asked me about uh, podcast recommendations for students. So I have some, I'm going to share them here for three levels, elementary, middle, and high school. And thankfully, I also found a list that has even more that I will also link to from the website weareteachers.com. But here are three recommendations for elementary school. First up is But Why, and that is But Why, a curious podcast for kids. My son, Miles, who is nine, loves this podcast. Okay. I've talked about it on podcast PD before as a recommendation, but here you go. Kids have all kinds of crazy questions. It's one of the things we love best about them. This production from Vermont public radio tackles such topics as why do people have nightmares? Do animals get married? And why do lions roar? I will include a link to, but why in the show notes for this episode and everything else I'm about to talk about. A second podcast that I think would be great for elementary school students is called Tumble. The description, science is brought to life in this podcast that tells stories about science discoveries with help from actual scientists. They answer questions from why cats always seem to land on their feet to what a journey to the center of the earth would actually look like. And that podcast is called Tumble. The third one that I'd like to recommend for the elementary level is called Brains On. Brains On features science and kids, and the host and her kid co-host talk with food scientists and snake handlers, they put on plays, they write songs, and a whole lot more. It's a science lesson for your ears. 
And there are a number of other ones. There are some great fiction podcasts, some great storytelling podcasts that are great for the elementary level as well. But I want to move on and talk about three middle school recommendations. The first one, The Radio Adventures of Eleanor Amplified. Okay. And this podcast is about the world famous radio reporter Eleanor as she foils devious plots, outwits crafty villains, and goes after the big story. Eleanor's pursuit of truth takes her into orbit, out to sea, and even to the halls of Congress. Her adventures are entertaining and informative. That's the radio adventures of Eleanor Amplified. Next up, appropriate for at least the middle school level, is Star Talk Radio. That's right, the Neil deGrasse Tyson podcast where he talks about all things space, stars, planets, humans in space, and so much more. He also interviews a lot of amazing people like Buzz Aldrin and Alan Rickman. So that is Star Talk Radio. Next up for the middle school level, Stuff You Missed in History Class. The title speaks for itself. You learn about people and events that are often overlooked in a typical history class. Now the high school level, three recommendations here. First up is called Adultish Youth Radio. Okay. And this podcast is a culture, advice, and storytelling podcast produced entirely by youths, two youths, <laughs> who are almost adults. Uh, a great activity that you might want to try using this podcast could be to have your students select a topic in the news today and write their own podcast sharing their take on the news, similar to what they're doing on adultish. Next up, and I know I've talked about this before, my wife enjoys it, I, I also enjoy it, uh, and it's Freakonomics Radio. This is a podcast created by co-author of Freakonomics and Super Freakonomics, Stephen Dubner, and he invites you, the listener, to explore the hidden sides of everything. And given his almost 300 episodes on topics ranging from millionaires versus billionaires to how to win a Nobel Prize, he is well on his way to talking about everything. And the spin on it is everything has an economic perspective to it. All right. So check out Freakonomics Radio with your high school students. And the third one, and I've been listening to this one for many years now, favorite of mine, if you're into true crime, and it is criminal. I love this podcast personally, and I think students, at least of high school age, will love it as well. This podcast is full of stories of people who've done wrong, been wronged, or gotten caught somewhere in the middle. Phoebe Judge explores topics from owls killing people to how to fake your death to the life of a police dog. So check out Criminal. And those are nine podcasts appropriate uh, for various levels of K through 12. Again, three elementary school recommendations, but why? Tumble and Brains On. For middle school, The Radio Adventures of Eleanor Amplified, Star Talk Radio, and Stuff You Missed in History Class. And three for the high school level, Adultish, Freakonomics, and Criminal. Once again, I will have out in the show notes at chrisnessy.com slash 186 a link to a lengthier list that has some more recommendations for each of the three levels of K-12 education. Now to part two of audio and podcasting in education in 2021. And I would just want to give some, I guess, maybe updated or just some refresher thoughts because maybe it's been a while since you considered podcasting or maybe you're new to the show and you are thinking about doing this in your classroom with your students or even for yourself. This advice is applicable to anybody who's interested in this. So first, let me say that back at the end of 2017, in episodes 96, 97, and 98, I did a three-part series related to creating and starting podcasting. Episode 96 was why you should podcast. Episode 97 was you want a podcast, now what? And episode 98 was how to create a podcast. A lot of what I say in those three episodes from four years ago is still applicable and relevant. And here's some new stuff. So first, 
when people talk about starting podcasts and getting kids creating, or really, again, anybody creating podcast content or audio content, people typically want to know, what do I need to buy? What software do I need? And what should I podcast about? So in brief, in terms of gear, there's a lot of gear I could recommend. I could make specific recommendations to you on how you can start for nothing up to if you've got grant money and you've got some funding to invest in podcast gear for your classroom or your school, I can make recommendations for that as well. Uh, to find those, you're going to want to go to chrisnessy.com slash podcast gear. All right. And when we're talking about gear, people are typically asking about microphones, recorders. What, what are the physical pieces of hardware that I need to record? Off the top of my head, two microphones that I recommend, and this hasn't changed since 2017. One is the Samson Q2U USB XLR microphone or the ATR 2100X. Now, there is a difference. There used to be the ATR 2100. Now you've got the ATR 2100X. And the only difference between the two versions is the latest one has USB-C connectivity. So it connects with USB-C to USB-A, or it can use a USB-C cable to get the job done and get it connected. Both microphones are plug and play to your computer, or you have the XLR capability to connect your microphone to a digital audio recorder or a mixer. And again, if you're looking for recorders, I recommend things like the Zoom uh, H6N, which is a portable digital audio recorder. In terms of mixers and interfaces, here on my desk, I have the Scarlett Focusrite 2i2, which allows me to connect two XLR microphones that can then go USB into the computer. So again, the microphone I'm using is the Shure SM7B, not necessarily a microphone you want to have in your classroom. Maybe it's a microphone you want to have at home. Definitely something to consider. Uh, where was I going with that? So we're talking about microphones. We're talking about accessories. Um, oh, in terms of maybe you want to create some sort of portable podcast studio or have a more permanent setup in your classroom. Okay. And the two pieces of hardware I could see where you could connect multiple microphones because often maybe you want to have three kids or four kids being able to podcast. First is the Rodecaster Pro, which allows you to connect four microphones. You can record right on this what looks like a mixer. There's a soundboard on it with buttons and you can connect headphones for everybody who's using it. And you could connect it to a computer or you could record directly to the device. There's also the Zoom Live Track L8 podcast recorder, which allows you to connect uh, six XLR microphones to it. And there is a new one, which I'm going to look up right here as I'm doing it. It is from Tascam. So I'm typing in Tascam podcast. It's the Tascam Mixcast 4. And this is very similar to the Rodecaster Pro. It's a desktop unit. You can connect up to four microphones to it. You can also connect the whole unit to your computer. And it now acts as an audio interface where you can have sound coming from your computer. You can mix it all in. Very fancy. Looks like a lot of fun. And I'm actually saving, uh, squirreling away my, my, my pennies and, and my nuts to possibly add that to my setup, either A, in my classroom, which would be awesome, or B, right here on my desk. Because now that I'm in this game, I'm kind of a gear junkie. So I'm always looking and kind of keeping my eyes open for different things. All right. Next up, let's talk a little bit about software and tools. Now, there are any number of programs that you can use to edit audio, all right? The program that I use and recommend strongly to anybody, whether you are on Windows, Mac, or Chromebook, and yes, you can do this on a Chromebook, is Audacity. Audacity is free. Audacity, you've probably heard of it. Maybe you played with it, but it is still a very powerful audio editing tool. I will include a link in the show notes, again, out at chrisnessy.com slash 186 with a link to an article from podnews.net about how you can install Audacity onto a Chromebook, okay? Now, if you don't have the ability to install something on a Chromebook uh, like, like Audacity, and 
maybe you don't have the permission or it's just too taxing. A new web-based audio editor that I've been playing around with is called Audio Mass. Audio, M-A-S-S. And the website is audiomass.co. It's got a very visually pleasing user interface. Uh, You can record directly into it. It's got some great post-production effects like noise reduction, a compressor you can normalize. You have graphic equalization. There's a limiter. You can do some distortion, some reverb. You can speed up, speed down. Uh, It is not multi-track. So if you just want somebody to record audio and just kind of capture it, this would be a way to do it. It might be a way to be able to capture stuff on a Chromebook and then maybe use it on another device. Uh, But this would not be a multi-track where you could have like separate background music and do a whole full-blown production. But if you just need a way to record audio onto a Chromebook, audiomass.co might be the way you can get it done. Now, what do you podcast about? I'm looking at my notes and I have one word, anything. You can podcast about anything. Your students can podcast about anything. But if you want them to feel comfortable and confident podcasting, you're going to have to give them a little bit of direction. So maybe that's starting off with different projects and assignments where they are recording audio. And then you can be having them listen to podcasts and kind of plant that seed, right? Find out they might be listening to podcasts already, okay? And their definition of podcast might be different from mine. They might think that because they watch and subscribe to certain channels on YouTube that they're watching a podcast or that's them listening to a podcast. I've become a little bit more relaxed with what I will accept as the definition. And to be quite honest, if people are listening to content on a regular basis, go ahead, call it a podcast. That's okay, right? If they really get into it, then their definition will grow and change and evolve just like this entire space has since, you know, 2003, 2004. You know, you might consider what I shared earlier in the episode about the, you know, listen to this audio that I'm sharing via QR code. Maybe some people will listen to that and think, oh, the school has a podcast. That's fine. I mean, technically, is it a podcast? No, but I just want people to listen. And ultimately, that's what you want people to do. But what are people going to listen to? They're going to listen to content that makes them think, laugh, cry, or do something, or just evokes some emotion in them right? You listen to this podcast on a regular basis because probably because I make you cry. No, (laughs) you know, I I make you think I make you laugh. You know, I make you want to go out and try and do something, right? So you're getting value. So teach your students how to provide value. You know, if I take a lesson from Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, you know, don't worry about creating content, worry about documenting, document what's going on. There is, again, you can podcast about anything, So anything covers anything, have them podcast about assignments, have them do fiction. You know, we expose our students to many different kinds of writing styles. There are many different kinds of podcast styles. There are many different kinds of video content styles that you can create, you know, from vlogging or creating documentaries. So there's so many different ways to create content. And I guess that's really what I'm getting at. How can we get our students to be more creative and empower them to create podcasting is one way it's not the only way and it certainly isn't going to be something that resonates with every student and that's okay it doesn't have to but just like everything else we make students try make them try podcasting you should try it too so again go back and check out episodes 96 97 and 98 if you want specific gear and hardware recommendations Go to chrisnessy.com slash podcast gear that's in the show notes. If you swipe left, right in your podcast player, you should be able to click on it and go there. So it's all my recommendations uh, that I have on Amazon. In terms of tools, you can use Audacity. Go check out audiomass.co. You can use Audition. Basically, you can use your phone. You can record an audio note. Again, it doesn't have to be pretty, but you can polish it later. So just get the kids to record. What should they record? Anything. Just teach them how to do it. Give them the skills, teach them to fly, and then let them fly. Get out of their way and empower them with the tools and the knowledge to create. And you might want to try it too. That's the featured content. Now, 
let's talk about giving stuff a try. So the Just Give It a Try segment, there is still time to submit a response for the next question of the month. Back on episode 185, I talked a lot about collaboration. So I want to know, what are yours and your students' favorite tool for collaboration and why? Depending on when you're listening to this, you can submit your thoughts to me still by Friday, October 1st, 2021. And any responses I get on or before Friday, October 1st, I will include in the next episode, which is scheduled to release on Sunday, October 3rd. So based on this one, we're going to have a quick turnaround from episode to episode. So if you've got some thoughts, get them to me by Friday, October 1st. And I'll be honest, as of right now, I don't have any. So nobody has responded to this question. So you've got a chance to get your voice on the show. Friday, October 1st, get it to me. So we could talk about just giving it a try. Thank you for checking out this episode of the House of EdTech podcast. Don't skip to the next episode of whatever you're going to listen to next yet. I got some things to say, so pay attention. One, make sure you think about what you are going to submit for the 2021 Smackdown. If you heard me say it at the beginning and you heard me say it now, you're now obligated to submit something. So I'm waiting. All right, go back, listen to the beginning of the episode, get the details. As far as this episode, keep the conversation going. I would love to connect with you and I want to hear your thoughts on podcasting and audio and what you're doing with your students. Share what's working. Future Just Give It a Try segments can happen because of what you share. So if you're doing this, let me know what's working and what hasn't worked. If you're hesitant to get your students podcasting, what's the holdup? Let's go. We can do this and figure it out together. Send me a note. Go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback. And that's C-H-R-I-S-N-E-S-I dot com. Now, if you enjoy the podcast, I greatly appreciate you making this podcast something you listen to on a regular basis. But do me a favor, share the show, tweet about it, retweet this, share this show on social media right from your podcast player. I want to see some tweets. Let's go. House of EdTech Army, rise up. The other thing you can do, you can also become an awesome supporter. My awesome supporter program is powered by Patreon.com, which allows a consumer of content like you to support a creator like me. Special thanks to my awesome supporters, who include Anthony Arnaud from the STEM Class Podcast, Dan Gallagher. Happy belated birthday, Dan. You can find his writings at gallagertech.edublogs.org. Carlos Garza, Mr. G., from the Aced Tech Podcast. You can find it at aced.tech. Peggy George. Connect with Peggy on Twitter, at pgeorge. Jeff Herb, my OG supporter. Hope you're doing well, my man. Connect with Jeff at Jeff Herb on Twitter. Mike Messner. Connect with Mike at Messner underscore Mike. Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook. You know Matt. Go connect with Matt Miller. If you're not, what are you doing? Matt, got to have you back on the show at some point. So let's make that happen. JP Presavento. Catch up with JP Presavento at jppres.com. Patty Reefus at PGR Teaches. Lori Simpson at North L. Simpson. And of course, Kyle Wilcox at Level Up Ed Tech. Go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome to be awesome. The next episode is going to come your way on October 3rd. Until next time, thanks for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try.